Hi, welcome back to Burning River Bushcraft. Today we're going to be building a carving hatchet with a steam bent handle. So I live about an hour and a half from a large Amish community. I was down in that area taking a spoon carving class a few weeks ago, and at that class I had my trusty Gransford Brooks carving hatchet. Love this thing. This is a carved handled version. Absolutely love it. And while I was down there, uh, I was discussing carving axes with the guy that owns the, the shop that it, the class was held in, and he has a huge collection of antique tools. And his particular choice of carving axe was a uh, hewing hatchet. So this is an offset beveled hewing hatchet, and this one's pretty similar to what he had. So you can see it's completely flat on this side with almost a chiseled edge on this side. So this is designed for straight up hewing. That's what I always have used these for or thought these were used for in the past. I've got several of these large hatchets like this. This one I got at an auction. I've never used this one. I've never even obviously had a handle on it. So this shop's in the process of getting a custom carving hatchet made. And it's going to be similar to an antique based off of an antique that he had, which is kind of sort of like this. But the main thing that was interesting to me was the handle itself. And if you look at this handle, this is a bent offset handle to go with the offset head. So I've got an older hatchet that's got a similar curved shape to this. This one's a little more defined. This one's actually like a faceted handle. So this one uh, lets me index it. It doesn't slip around as much. And this is a completely different style. So it's different, but I'm always looking to learn new things. Very skinny, very slender handle. Uh, this is based on an antique. This is, they were noticing when they were collecting older hatchets, older hewing hatchets, this steam bent handle was pretty common to have on them. Now, I don't know if this is a regional thing. I don't know if this is a, uh, something that's more prevalent in my area. I tried to research a little bit of it and I can't really find that much information. There are people that know way more about this than I do. Uh, I took that hatchet head down the next time I was in the area and talked to him about retrofitting this to a style similar that he's got until his prototype is available. And this is what we've got. So there's a pretty good shot of what we're dealing with. We're going to have a crooked handle with an offset head on it. Uh, it's going to be weird. It's going to be something that I'm concerned with accuracy for one thing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit what I'm after. But this is a very slender handle, but it does have a taper to it. It's a little bit wider here in the back. Uh, it is pretty darn skinny here. Much, much skinnier than any handle that I've got available to me. Now I did have a couple heads that are similar to that, and I've got another one of these handles waiting to go. The other head, he warned me, was a little bit large. So that's telling me that because this does not have a large Fawn's foot or a, a back grip to keep your hand locked into the hatchet, that might be too much for this style. So I'm gonna mount this one up first and we will see before I make the next one to see if I like the weight or if there's any other modifications that I wanna do for me and for the style chopping that I like to do. So before I jump right into putting the handle on, I am gonna modify this head just a little bit. This is, you can see the toe of the, the ax. It's got a little bit of wear to it compared to the top. It's not dead flat. And traditionally a carving hatchet is more rounded and this would be more of a flat hewing hatchet. Uh, the couple of the hatchets I used at the class, the antique hatchets that were uh, some of the guys were carving with, definitely had more of a round shape to them. Going back and speaking with him after the class, showing him this head, showing him some other examples of what I had. He recommended I kind of round this edge a little bit. And that kind of makes sense. Uh, a flat face, if I was hewing just a paddle or something long and wide, uh, it would make sense for this. But to make it more of a general purpose carving hatchet, I'd rather have a rounded face. I'm gonna head in the barn and we're gonna put this on the grinder. And these are just guess lines for me. This just shows you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna eyeball it and keep it as symmetrical as possible. I'm gonna leave the flat face full length and I'm just gonna go ahead and kick these edges off and around them a little bit. Now an older head like this, you can see the temper line and I'm going to work with this thing barehanded and it's never gonna get hot. So I'm never going to 
be in danger of losing the temper at all, I'm going to start with a new belt. And I'm going to go slowly at first. If I'm not quite happy with the weight, the back end of this is pretty darn thick. I might kick this back edge in a little bit to try to take some weight down. So I'm going to be light at first. I'm probably not going to get to these lines. This is just kind of a rough shape so you can see what I'm thinking. And this back edge, I'm definitely going to take a 45 off of this. I'm going to knock the corners off this for certain. And again, I'm never going to be letting this thing get hot. I've got a new belt on here and I've got some water and I'm working barehanded and I will dip this and keep it cool the entire time. once you get into this you can kind of see what you're dealing with you can see right here I've got a crack on the pole of this hatchet head so this isn't hurting anything but since I'm here I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up so I have to get to the bottom of this and you see how much meat I've got I've got God's plenty and keep in mind what we're doing with it I'm not making a showpiece so if I feel that a crack or a chip is not worth my time getting out or it's going to you know make the hatchet head structurally weaker or lighter than i'm after i'm just gonna let it go but i'm starting to narrow it down a little bit i don't want to get too close into this eye so i'm doing most of my work back at this edge here i'm going to try to get this chip out and then we'll work on the the face of the hatchet so i got the back about as far as i want to go with it and I went ahead and smoothed it all out. And I took one edge off to the corner. And I'm going to go ahead and do this other side. Once I get both corners knocked off, at that point I'm just going to kind of rock it and get the proper shape that I'm looking for. Alright, so I have my bevel pretty well established. I've got a small step here. I do have a small step here, you can see, because I haven't quite blended this in yet, because I do not have an edge on it. This is still about dime thick. I'm going to leave it a little thicker right now until I get the head mounted. That way I don't have to go ahead and mask it off. Uh, this is dull as all get out, but I've got my bevel established, I've got my curve established, I've got the crack ground out as well as I want to in the back. I'm going to go ahead and switch over and go ahead and mount the handle now. So the eye of this hatchet is pretty darn close to the handle itself. So this hopefully is fairly uneventful. Now you can screw this up and if you can screw it up, chances are I will screw it up. I have a hatchet that is set up to be a right hand or left hand hewer. So you can mount this either way. I am right handed. So I have to make sure I've got the handle and the head set up for right hand use. So here we can see this is just started in, but I want my hand away from the workpiece. If this was bent the opposite way, uh, my hand would be deeper into the workpiece than I really want it. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball this up and start to fit it a little bit and see how much wood has to get removed. So we can see here it's starting to get heavy just on this one side. The other side's not as bad. I'm going to go ahead and I'll use the stand-up shave pony on my Ultimate Sportsman's workbench and we'll just clean that right up. So this is just trial and error. I'm taking off a little bit at a time. The draw knife makes this really easy work and the stand-up shave pony works a lot better than going over to a different piece of equipment. Everything's right here on my workbench ready to go.
it's peeling a little bit but it's not too awful bad and I'm probably gonna end up seating it right around here if you look in at the head I've got and yeah, maybe three eighths to go so it's gonna work out pretty well hopefully I'm just gonna grab one of my carving knives and just cut off that wood that's peeling back So hopefully this will be the last time I'm going to go ahead and take these edges down. I can feel the noticeable difference. So I'm just going to carry this, this line down oh, about a quarter inch or so. So once I get this sanded out, I'm going to go ahead and put some boiled linseed oil in it. But it's, it's a unique handle, definitely compared to what I'm used to. I mean, look at that offset. And the fact that it's, it's skinny feels a little odd to me. Uh, it's kind of got a good indentation right here. So this is kind of like your natural, natural point, and then you would choke back for a full swing. So it's kind of uh, kind of unique, but I'm looking forward to trying it out. So, so the boiled linseed oil, of course, makes it look better. I'm going to put a couple coats on, we'll let it dry, and then I will go ahead and put a finished edge on this axe and we'll see how it works. So I finished up this hatchet and have a beautiful edge on this thing. So I was able to capture that bevel and we still have got that, that chisel grind. There we go. So as far as the handle goes, there's a pretty good picture of what we got. Offset, definitely skinny, skinny handle, and this thing is is shaving sharp here. Just popping hairs right off. So this thing's a beauty. Uh, the weight is definitely significantly less. I did take off quite a bit because I had that chip in the back of the pole. Probably didn't need to do that, uh, but I was just more comfortable chasing it out. Uh, you can see some nicks and stuff in the, the axe head just from years and years of use and abuse. So I probably could knock this off if I am uncomfortable with the weight and want to take it down a little bit more. That's probably going to be in my next move. But realistically, this doesn't feel too bad to me yet. But looks good. Sharp is all good out. And the only thing left to do is give it a try. So this is a thin piece of cherry here. And this thing is heavy and sharp. And like I said, the offset is kind of weird. So you definitely don't want to swing for the fences right away with this thing.
So the initial impressions are this thing is a handful. This is a lot of hatchet head on this skinny handle. And you can see my accuracy is definitely not quite there. But you gotta kinda expect that actually. Well, shocking, but my control's not quite there, not like it should be. And I got the rough shape more or less in. It's close enough where I can probably do this with a knife. If it was one of my hatchets or axes that I'm a little more comfortable with, I probably could have got this a lot closer. But it'll, uh, it's definitely sharp. There's a lot of weight to that. So I'm kind of looking at multiple variants here. Uh, first off is the head weight, which is you know, what I've used for a regular hewing hatchet before, but that's a lot for a carver. And I'm getting a lot of hand fatigue from that already. And I believe that's just from the small size of the handle itself. So overall, this is a pretty cool hatchet. I'm glad I modified the head, sharpened it up, and finally I'm using it. And I'm glad this is a good opportunity for me to use the bent handle. Uh, I was thinking a lot about this after attending that class and trying some of those offset handles. Uh, and it is different. It is unique. The problem with this right now for me is it's just a lot of variable changes. I've changed the handle geometry completely different from what I'm used to. I'm used to locking my hand in to that large rolled fawn and the octagonal handle that's got plenty of facets that really holds into my hand. With this, this is such a skinny little handle, I've really got to hold on to it now, and I am getting some fatigue, and this is a little bit small for my hands. The other variable, obviously, is that bend on this thing. It looks like I'm out water witching, trying to find uh, where the dig a well at. So that is a, another variance, and the fact that this is a chiseled edge hewing hatchet, it chops completely different. So. This is just going to take some time and I'm not fully going to commit myself to this yet, but this is going to be put in use. If I have issues with that, I think is more weight related, I'm just going to start nipping this off and uh, taking, taking more steel off this and removing weight. But right now it is heavy. It does not feel good, does not feel natural. It does not have that balance point. Uh, a lot of that is from the just the diameter of the handle itself and not from the offset. So I love the idea of taking an old antique and modernizing it and being able to use it and use it in the proper context. I'm not taking this and turning it into a throwing hatchet or a weird looking Viking axe or anything. This was meant to carve wood and work wood and I'm still working wood with it. I just modified the head to what works better for me and any time you get to try something out new, like a old school steam bent handle, uh, you're just adding another tool for your toolbox. So if this is something you'd like to see and maybe would like to see more of, go ahead and click like, click subscribe. I am on Facebook and Instagram as well, so follow me there. I have a lot of bushcraft, uh, woodcraft survival stuff, as well as antique tools, a lot of outdoor builds. If you like what I'm doing, but you want to get more in-depth on some of my techniques, I teach classes on outdoor core. I've got a class on uh, making fishing lures. We carve paddles in another class using just axes, kind of a lot like this, a rasp, some sandpaper, and a knife. And I have a course on building the ultimate sportsman's workbench. Part of that workbench was the axe log that you saw me char uh, using before, as well as the stand-up shave pony uh, that I shaped the handle with. So the build itself turned out great. 
the handle fit is excellent. The modification to the head itself came out perfect. This thing's like razor sharp. Uh, like I said, the weight is more than I'm used to. Um, before I make any changes, I'm just gonna go ahead and get more time with this. I wanna test the handle more. I wanna test the head more. And uh, push comes to shove, I can always remove metal, but it's definitely hard to get that weight built back up if I was to take something off prematurely. I would definitely say the best test for me for this steam bent handle would be doing more of a traditional hewing project than just carving spoons. Uh, the weight on this would really come in handy when you're hewing something down flat that's large like a paddle or a bow or something like that. I mean, that is exactly what this hatchet has designed for. This steam bent handle plays itself perfectly to really swing it away and just taking off large pieces of wood as we're hewing something down flat. So perhaps maybe spoon carving is not the best use for this, but just because you're not carving something little with a hatchet doesn't mean you're still not carving. So this might be something better in this weight range uh, of more of a heavy duty carver. But the jury's still out on this one. Uh, it's just gonna take time. I'm not gonna jump to a quick decision, say this is stupid or this is great. So I'm just gonna put time with it, make a whole lot of wood chips, and uh, try to add another tool to my toolbox. Till next time, this has been Jamie Boggs with Burning River Bushcraft. See you soon.